What's good everyone and welcome to my guide for the Enforcer in Lawbreakers. The Enforcer is an excellent beginner character and very versatile in multiple ranges. Your primary weapon is the Aerator, a fully automatic assault rifle which has a magazine size of 35, it'll deal 13 to 25 damage depending on the range, and it has a headshot multiplier of 1.5 rounded down. That means 19 to 37 damage depending on your range. The reload time is two seconds. The aerator does have bloom, so at longer distances, be sure to pace your shots to ensure accuracy. Your secondary weapon of which you will want to get very familiar with is the Badger. This shock pistol is effective in close ranges and operates as a shotgun for you. The magazine size is six, deals nine to 126 damage, depending upon the range. It has a max range of 10 meters. The alternate fire button that most players don't really know about changes the spread pattern from horizontal to vertical. The weapon takes 1.5 seconds to reload. Your shift ability is Distortion Field. It boosts movement, rate of fire, and reload speeds for yourself and teammates who are within the AOE range of that ability. Your rate of fire increases by 20%. It does consume fuel, which is the bar to the left of your crosshairs. Damaging and killing enemies will replenish that fuel. Your E ability is one of the best abilities in all of your kit the Electromag Charge. It's an EMP grenade that temporarily neutralizes enemy abilities for two seconds. It also deals 10 to 50 damage, depending on how close to the center of the blast that the enemy is, and it has a 10 second cooldown. You can see here that after throwing the grenade, there is an AOE circle that extends. All enemies caught within this AOE blast will have their abilities temporarily disabled. Finally, your Q is the Bloodhound Launcher, which fires four tracking rockets at enemies. You press Q once to begin the lock-on sequence. You will see the crosshair change to indicate a lock-on with the opponent. You can fire the rockets by pressing Q again. Most new players press Q once and wait the full five and a half seconds it takes for the rockets to fire. That timer is built in to give you more time just to lock on. Don't make the mistake of locking on and never pressing Q again to engage. If no lock on occurs, you can obviously fire the rocket straight in the direction of your crosshairs, meaning you can get kills without locking on in tight spaces if you aim well. This is on a 75 second cooldown and each rocket does a whopping 160 damage. So again, press Q once to begin the sequence. If you get the lock on, press Q again to immediately fire those rockets. Alrighty, on to the gameplay. Now, as the Enforcer, your main strengths are your agility and the effectiveness that you have at virtually every range. You have 400 health, which is quite a bit, so you're extremely durable as well as hard to kill if you play the character correctly. Now, you want to view the Enforcer as a DPS slash support class. Your distortion field, it benefits not just you, but your teammates. They get that speed boost. They get that rate of fire increase as well. It's a fairly small AOE around you for distortion field, so it's not going to extend past a grouped up clump of teammates. But your E ability, that electromag charge, I think is one of the best abilities in the game. If you land a good electromag charge and shut down enemy abilities, especially when they're grouped up around an uplink or around the blitz ball, it can make just team fights a heck of a lot easier for you and your squad. It's very, very powerful. The distortion field is beneficial not just for speeding you up and then being a great escape tool. When you toggle it on and you get that 20% rate of fire increase, it can help during long distance fights. I noted at the beginning that you really want to pace your shots as the aerator does have bloom. If you're fighting somebody at a long distance, you can toggle on distortion field and begin firing and it actually will help you land those long distance shots a little bit more effectively. And I try and save that distortion field as well to speed up my reloads when possible. Using blind fire to traverse is very critical. Your main resource is fuel for distortion field and you want to make sure that you always have some of it available to you during fights so that you can escape. Blind firing, if you don't know, if you press the control key your character will fire behind you. If you're in a low gravity zone and in the air, this will propel you forward at a rapid speed. It's kind of a trade off though, because you have to decide, am I going to come into this fight with half a clip and get there faster? Or am I only going to blind fire just a little bit? You, you just want to be aware of how much ammo you have left during the blind fire sequences. The Badger pistol is your best friend. This thing right here, it is Oh, it is such an incredible tool to shut down annoying assassins and rushdown style players. 
One of the best pieces of advice I can give you is to immediately rebind the swap weapon key to a mouse button or maybe the alt key or the caps locks key. Anything that keeps your fingers on WASD is good. But if you need to you know, reach up for the number one or number two key, which I think are the defaults for swap weapon on the enforcer, that is no good. In the low grab zones and how fast paced this game is, you wanna maintain optimal movement at all times. And you don't wanna be in a situation where you really need to pull out that badger really quickly, but you also need to keep your middle finger on W. So you don't wanna reach up to number two and lose some of that upward momentum that you may be getting in a low grab zone. That's why swapping the button over to a mouse like button on the side, I have a Zowie FK2 and I just put it right on the bottom mouse button. It's very effective and you need to be able to switch to that badger quickly as this game like assassins can be a real burden for new enforcer players. Assassins just try and rush you down, get their blade strikes off. And if you don't swap over to the badger quick enough, they can make easy work of you. But if you become one of those players who's comfortable swap swapping to the badger, it, it's almost laughable. You look forward to the situations in which uh, assassins try and challenge you. It just becomes a heck of a lot more fun to take care of that. Survivability. This is a big part, I think, of the Enforcer's Kit because your distortion field is perfect for kiting enemies. Let's say you get into a situation where two enemies are right around the corner and you know you're not going to be able to kill them and you got to get out of there quickly. You can enable distortion field, jump, and hold the S key, and even in normal gravity zones, you can float upwards backwards at a high speed while firing your weapon, which benefits from the increased rate of fire buff of distortion field. And it's amazing for kiting enemies. People who chase you in that state, as long as you're landing your shots, are going to be at a fairly big disadvantage. Timing your shots, again, very, very key. Don't let that bloom get out of control. It can be easy to do so, especially there's so much to think about in Lawbreakers that it can sometimes be easy just to mash and hold down the left mouse button. Try not to do that and definitely practice the, uh, the aerator at different ranges, kind of understand where I need to pace my shots a little bit better and how close do I need to be to just sort of let it loose and, and totally triggers down all the way. The mark of a good enforcer is how well they utilize their electromag grenade. This is the E button. Team fights, objectives, you know, the uplink, blitzball, capture points. If you land a nice E, it is hugely beneficial for your teammates. And especially in this game, players conglomerate around the same areas all the time. Now, my E's are not super polished yet. It's going to take me a while to figure it out. But setting yourself up in areas like right near choke points, knowing where you're going to see enemies traversing through, it becomes much easier to land E's just like that because you're no longer trying to just sort of guess. You know the enemy is going to be coming through there. And the timing on the E is kind of lenient since you have that sort of expanding AOE that I showed you off at the beginning of the video. Using shift effectively speeds up your reloads and landing shots returns fuel. So if you're getting a lot of kills, you're landing your shots while shift is active, you're going to be returning fuel to that bar. Try not to be starved of fuel though. As I mentioned earlier, it's a really, really good escape tool. Another big pitfall that new players make is with your Q, the Bloodhound Launcher. I mentioned earlier that when most players pick up this class, they press Q once and then sit there and wait five and a half seconds for their rockets to go off. As soon as you have a lock on, you can press Q a second time. You don't even really need a lock on, but as soon as you are ready to fire those rockets, I think you'll see it here in this clip, locked on, I press Q a second time and I fire my rockets at the enemy. That is a huge mistake new players make, where they press Q once and they sit there for five and a half seconds, which in Lawbreakers is like an eternity. And usually by that end of the five and a half seconds, they don't have a lock on. Those rockets will lock on and follow players extremely well. Be careful of objects in your pathway, but they will curve around quite a few surfaces. So when you're out in these larger open spaces, if you're sort of further away and you've ensured that there's no objects blocking sort of the path of the rockets, you can do some absolute serious damage with your Q. And as I mentioned earlier, in close ranges, see, look at that, I mean, the tracking is just awesome. In close ranges, if you do not want to wait for a lock on, or let's say you really want to pepper an objective point, you don't have to wait. You can just double tap Q the rockets will come straight out and just aim where you want them to go. They are projectiles that take a little bit of time and they deal 160 damage each. So a very, very worthwhile um, part of your, your toolkit to help you out. Group up. Make sure you're always working together with your teammates and embody. Totally think about the support elements that you can offer them with your E and your shift. 
It's not very fun to go toe to toe as the enforcer with a good gunslinger or a good wraith. You are best used in tandem with your teammates, retreating, making sure you land your ease, and then helping the team play the objective. That really is one of the most broad, overarching themes of all of Lawbreakers. Stick with your squad and play the objective. Slaying is important, but playing the objective will win you games, period. They have designed these objective modes to benefit players who stick together as a squad and utilize their abilities in a way that offers a good coordinated cohesion. And that transitions into the idea of having a balanced team. You have many different roles in Lawbreakers, some of which are more tanky, some are more agile, some have very little health and high DPS output. So if you load into a game and you already see two enforcers on your team, regardless of if the enforcer is your main role, it's best to pick a role that benefits your team. This game is about the objective, and so if you guys don't have a Titan or a Juggernaut on the squad and it's all just very high DPS, low health characters, you may want to go that route. Vice versa, if you have no supports like the Battle Medic, you want to implement that into your squad. I've seen a lot of games right now where you have like three or four Wraiths, or let's say two or three Assassins, and those teams generally will lose to a balanced team composition. So while you are learning the game, I really suggest picking two or three roles in, in particular and just learning them, playing them and picking what fits best for that game. And maps, maps specifically, have different benefits to different roles and characters. I'll probably have to do a video about that down the road, as I myself haven't had enough time with the game to really digest what I think is the best hero for what map. The two biggest barriers of entry for this character are tracking and timing. Tracking is how well you can place the crosshairs on the opponent and follow them. And the timing element comes into how well can you actually time your left clicks how well can you keep your burst and bloom under control? And how effectively are you enabling shift distortion field at the right times? So if you're new to the FPS space and tracking is something that you find really tough, I would ask you to take a very clear look at your mouse sensitivity. A lot of times new FPS players only give themselves about a 10 to 12 inch space to work with on their desk, the size of kind of a standard mouse pad. And oftentimes, you really want the extra benefit of having a larger mouse mat and a larger desk space, using your elbow as the fulcrum point, and sort of using your entire forearm in a waving motion. The more distance you give yourself, and obviously sensitivity is, is player specific, but you don't want to have it too high of a sensitivity. Yes, you're able to fling around and look all over the place, but your tracking is going to be terrible. You want to have enough control over the mouse so that you can keep the crosshair firmly planted on the opponent. There's awesome guides out there for finding the optimal mouse sensitivity for you in PC shooters, and that might be a concept I go into a little bit later. For me, I make sure that a 180 is, is basically, I would say 10 inches or so, and so for me to do a full 360, I'm sort of having to use a lot of desk real estate space and sometimes having to pick up the mouse to slide it back over. While this doesn't make me the best Twitch player who can spin around real quick and pop him in the face, it allows me to track a heck of a lot easier. That's gonna do it for my enforcer guide. If there's anything I missed, I would love to hear about it in the comments section down below. A great beginner character, I encourage anybody to pick this guy up and give him a go because he's sort of a traditional FPS role and will seem familiar to many PC shooter players. If you liked the video, I would love it if you would subscribe for more. I create Halo, Lawbreakers, and Destiny content as well as some Titanfall 2 stuff when I can. Absolutely loving this game, finding it hard to put it down. Really wish that the word would get out more and more players would come and enjoy this because it's a fantastic title that deserves a heck of a lot more support. If you like fast-paced arena shooters, I think Boss Key and Nexon have outdone themselves. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.